Yes, coming from me, Yuhua Chicken Go Wick Hamasaki. Hey guys. Hey guys, I'm Larsa Pippen. And I'm Marisol Patton, and welcome to the first ever. Now, does that not look like a scene straight out of bootleg opinions? Anyways, hello everyone, it's me, Bootleg Joanne, and welcome back to Bootleg Opinions. Bootleg Opinions. I know today we're here to talk about the looks, but often at times we never really talk about the smell. So let me share with y'all one of my favorite fragrance brands, Dozier, an alternative fair way to fragrances. They take luxurious and high-end fragrances and reproduce these famous brands that are $200 to $300 to just $29 to $59. So why pay all that extra money when you can just get Dozier? And currently, Dozier has launched their Speak Easy collection with four new perfumes. The Golden Rum and Amber, Fresh Margarita and Lime, Smoky and Mezcal and Cucumber, and the Bubbly Spritz and Bitters. And today, I received the Fresh Margarita and Lime, just in time for the beach and the summer. Mmm, it smells so good, luxurious, fresh margarita and lime. Like, I feel like I'm walking through nature right now. Mmm, so good. And what I love is that inside the box, there's a card that tells you what ingredients are in there, what it smells like, and the family that it belongs to. For example, the fresh margarita and lime belongs in the citrus and aquatic family. The bottles are so chic and minimalistic looking. Plus, they're travel size friendly, so if you're having a night out, just drop it in your bag and go. Literally. Now sachet your way to the link in the description and use my code to get started with Dozier. I'm sure you'll love them as much as I do, but if you don't, there's a 30 day money back guaranteed. <sighs> Not only does this remind me of the summer and the beach, but I'll be wearing this out tonight. <clears throat> and in this episode, I'll be giving you my opinions on this entire episode because I feel like finally we have something to talk about because for the past few episodes, I feel like there's not much to talk about, hence the videos have been kind of been just two minutes or three minutes. And if you haven't seen the videos, go and check them out because the views aren't too great. I guess also the fact that people are tuning out as the season goes on. Go check them out because, yeah, the views aren't too great. And also, absorb the nails for the next 10 seconds because I'm gonna remove my gloves because I didn't do my nails. So, observe it, enjoy it while you can. Anyway, gloves off. <laughs> And you're probably wondering, well, Mama you, why don't you get a guest for Bootleg Opinions? And, and if you haven't noticed, the last few episodes, there hasn't been a guest because I couldn't really get anybody to watch this season. Hence, I've been bootlegging this entire season, mostly myself. But anyway, I'll be talking about the entire episode from the reading challenge to the talent show to the lip sync for your life and also my prediction for next week. Anyway, to start it off, it is the reading challenge. Because reading is what? Oriento. Just kidding. Fundamental. Now, I think that of all the girls that done the reading, I think Mrs. Kasha Davis was my favorite. I think that hers were more original and it really leads you on a story of building a story, a climax, and punching you with the reading, right? Whereas I feel like some of the girls, if not most of the girls, just had jokes, but I've heard them before and they just kind of changed it up a little bit to kind of fit the drag queen that they're reading, right? So I don't think that it was that original. So I will have to say that Mrs. Kasha Davis is my favorite. And you can kind of see who flopped and who did well in the rating challenge based on how many reads they aired in the official episode. No shade. Now, on to the talent show. I personally think that it would have been great to open the season with a talent show because it would have really showcased each individual artist's talent and what their specification of drag that they present, right? But I think that in this case, it kind of works well too because they can still try to earn some extra points for the fame game. Anyways, if y'all noticed or have seen bootleg opinions before, Jimbo is currently wearing the outfit that she has worn on a previous episode before. We first up have Monica Beverly Hills, who was first to gone home. I think that she looks gorgeous, but unfortunately, I feel like there was no climax. I feel like it was just all an introduction to a performance that she's about to do. I feel like I want more. I feel like the entire time on stage, she's looking stunning and beautiful, but like, I want more. I felt like it was like a lead on to uh, a performance that didn't show. But anyway, so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to give this a pass. But a Yasuo look though. Next up is Elimination Lopez, and she's serving us a little tribute to her heritage. I think she looks beautiful. I think she looks gorgeous. She looks like Linda Evangelista, and she kind of disowned those tights. But I feel like, just like Monica Beverly Hills, it didn't really 
deliver. It didn't give me a climax. It was more of an introduction, and I think that she spent a lot of time with her hand movements, about one third of it, and then she did a little review, and then she did a little bit more hand movements and some feet movements, but I didn't get a climax from the entire performance. Overall, I felt like it was an introduction, and it left me wanting more. The look, I give this a yas, but the performance, I give this a pass. Next up is Mrs. Kasha Davis, and in this look that I've never would have expected to see on her. The hair doesn't really match with this look, I would say, um, and the boots either, but the overall costume I do enjoy. We see these fringes of the beautiful, vibrant colors. As far as the performance goes, I don't know if y'all check the comment sections on Instagram, but somebody said that she dances like a truck. It's not nice, but I thought it was kind of funny at the same time too. But anyway, back to the track. Honestly, I have no idea what she was singing most of the time because I feel like the instrument background was louder than the words and the words or maybe the mixing didn't go too well that I didn't really understand a lot of the words that she was saying. But the message was that she's trying to teach us to be kind and it kind of did remind me a little bit of Karen from Finance's performance from uh, Drag Race Down Under but this one is not cringy. Well, maybe a little bit but not as cringy. Overall, I give this whole look a soft yes and this whole performance a pass, sorry, even though it's about kindness, but you know, it still needs to be good, you know. <laughs> yes, coming from me, Yuhua Shik and Go Wick Hamasaki. Next up is Darian Lake, who is a bootleg queen, who is also having a smear campaign of all the girls. So if you haven't checked the tweets out, go check them out. They are hilarious. She is wearing a black dress, but I don't mind it because she's doing a stand up routine and it's not about the looks mainly. So this beautiful black dress on her is just fine. The jokes were hilarious, the jokes were funny, but I don't know if y'all know, Darian writes a lot of jokes and not get credited on Rose for reading challenges and as well as stand-up. So she is a hilarious queen and when she delivered her stand-up routine, I wasn't surprised that she is going to be funny. And she also has the humor that I enjoy, which is very self-deprecating. Overall, I give this look a yas and I give this performance a yas as well. Very good job, Darian Lake. Next up is James Manscape. Wow, I've been waiting for weeks to say James Manscape again since she's been eliminated. Out of all the performances, I think that this one stood out to me the most because she's not trying to vote, she's not trying to do any dips or splits or any tricks. She's just there to create a song and make us laugh and she really did that. Kind of reminded me of Trinity the Tuck's tucking talent. And it's about the comedy and the words. We know James Manscaped for her breastplate and she really delivered that personality with her humor, her camp, and her whimsical performance throughout the entire song. Now, I won't be showing any footages of James Manscape with her breasts out because I have done that before and it has gotten my YouTube video demonetized as well as the sponsorships pulled out. So, I do want to make some money on this video. And I give this look a yas and this whole performance a yas as well. Very good job, James Manscape. And by the way, James is also fighting with our other bootleg queen, Darian Lake, for the fame games. Go tell them to stop fighting because Mama Yu is very unimpressed. Because Mama Yu will fire those two queens if they keep fighting. Next up is Miss Kahana Montrese, and what a beautiful, cute look, y'all. It's giving me very MIA at the Madama Super Bowl, blah, 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 at the Super Bowl performance. It is very adorable, and I don't know if y'all know, but Kahana Montrese also has a background in cheerleading, and I absolutely fell in love with her cheerleading and her track when she came out with the song. What is it called? Uh. It came out after she was eliminated on season 11. I think it's like... Look at me, look at me. No. I'm Kanaha Mantra. Anyway, I don't know the exact words, but it's been quite some time since I've seen it. But if y'all want to check it out, link in the description. And it's a really cute track, by the way, with appearances from, I believe, Mena Luzon, Peppermint, as well as Trinity the Tuck. This whole performance has an introduction, climax, and ending, and I think she did a splendid job. Whereas I feel like the first few that we saw, including Nisha Lopez and Monica Beverly Hills, there wasn't much of a climax, whereas this one has all three stages. Sorry for the text. Although this outfit is cute, I did see her yuha several times throughout the entire performance. But I do give this look a yas and this performance a yas as well. Next up is Miss Lala Ree serving us the Lala Ree experience. And I have to say that with this hair, the makeup, the outfit, the shoes, 
I feel like this is the one of the most put together, if not better looks from Lala Reed this whole season. She absolutely delivered it in the lip sync, the performance, and the choreography, and she was totally giving us the experience with the hairography as well. Honestly, if this whole season had more challenges based on performance, I think Lala Reed would have done really well. But I think that there's so many design challenges and improv slash acting challenges, it kind of hindered her a little bit. But I did notice that she was wearing very tiny earrings, which I don't really approve. But the fact that she was dancing so much, I give this an okay because she is moving a lot and we don't want the earrings to fall out. In conclusion, I give this whole look a yas and this whole performance a yas as well. Next up is Jessica Wilde in a beautiful hair and dance costume and beautiful dance shoes. I think that this whole performance, she really delivered like 150% from start to end. Now, at first when I watched the performance, I was like, she kept doing choreography with the dancers, with the routines and stuff, but is she gonna give us a little bit more, something a little bit more different? And then she pushed the dancers out of the way and she still delivered it 150% solo. And those hair flips, baby. Jessica is known for her hair flips and she was twirling and giving us a seizure on stage. I give this look a yas, as well as this performance a yas as well. Next up is Jimbo making us a dessert from her entire outfit, from the hair, from the tatas, the hoochie, but I do wish that in the end, she kind of adds more ingredients with her a-ho too, but that's just me. I think this whole look, it's very naughty, it's very cute, very camp too, and I think that she makes these two colors beautifully together. And since, <laughs> and since we know that Jimbo is not much of a lip sync assassin, I think it was really smart for her for actually telling us a story, giving us almost kind of like a cooking show, but with like her costume instead. But anyway, I give this performance a yes, as well as this look a yes. Very smart move, Jimbo. We see you. Actually, I see you. And last up is Candy Muse serving us an original performance and song by Candy Muse. I think that she really delivered it from start to end. That danced her up, y'all. And surprisingly, the mixing of the song was a lot more clearer than some of the girls that performed earlier because I actually can hear what she was saying, even though most of the time we don't know what she's saying. Um, there was equalizing of the background track as well as her vocals, so great job on that. And she gave us an introduction, climax, and ending. And I looked for all three when looking at a performance. And especially when she got lifted up, come on now. Oh, I forgot Alexis. Last but not least, this is the official last person. Candy was the bootleg last, but Alexis is the last of the last. It's Alexis Michelle, and straight from hell, it's Alexis Michelle delivering us a singing vocal performance of a burlesque performance. <sighs> anyway, what, what the f did I just say? That doesn't even make any sense. And she looks beautiful in this blonde hair and red outfit, y'all. And again, I agree with the judges that she sang the entire song with range, as well as holding her entire breath throughout the entire song because there were no slip ups and I felt like she hit the marks with the notes as well and while stripping at the same time. Oh, oh my God. While, re while doing reveals at the same time too. I give this look a yas as well as this performance a yas as well. Great job, Alexis. You may go back to hell safely. My top twos, I have to say, is Lala Ree and James Mansfield and I do agree with the judges. Now on to the lip sync between James and Lala Ree. Do I agree that it was a double win? No. Personally, I think that Lala Reed should have won, even though James Manscaped is a bootleg queen. But, um, I'm not mad that I went to James Manscaped as well, because she is a bootleg queen. But if I have to pick, I will have to pick Lala Reed to be fair. But then again, nothing in this season makes sense anyway. But anyway, let me know in the comments below who do y'all want to win. I personally think that it's going to go to Jimbo because she had the best track record and the best looks compared to Candy. And uh, yeah, it's Jimbo. If not, we're f***ed. Anyway, bye y'all. Let me know in the comments who do y'all think should win. Hey, squirrel friends. When one video ends, just click on another one. It's called cringe viewing. Go ahead. I support you.